Hello. So, as of today, Sunday, 12th of May, the official translation for One Piece chapter 1114 is out. Have I read it? No, I don't read the official for One Piece. I only read TCB's translation. It's really the best translation. So, I want to discuss my thoughts for the chapter by myself because it's it's a really really good chapter it's one of the best chapters we've had in a while i want to go in if you've read the chapter i want to go in order i want to talk about my main thoughts and takeaways from the chapter so let me start the mission in this chapter we got vegapunk's message so let me talk about vegapunk for now so Vegapunk's message was basically an understanding of what the Void Century flashback should be and how we should expect to read it. So I'm gonna start from the from what I'm going up, hopefully. So Joy Boy, what we learn about Joy Boy, you know, he was the original pirate. So some theories I've seen is the world government before joy bay became a pirate there was no term for pirates in the one piece world like everyone who went again on the seas and traveled was not seen as a pirate they listened as ship fairs. so joy boy was the original pirate so the main theory from this i know i'm yapping but the main theory from this is the ancient kingdom's name is gonna be based on the Japanese word of pirates, which is Kaizoku. So, either the ancient kingdom was called Kaizoku or something to do with Kaizoku pirates, and then the world government changed the uh, changed the name for the ancient kingdom into Kaizoku, or something like that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's the best option right now. Another main thing we got is, for a long time in the One Piece community, many people felt like Nika and Joy... Okay, not for a long time, since it was revealed Luffy has the Nika Nika fruits. Spoilers for anyone who's not caught up to the end of Wano. If... Nika and Joy Boy are not the same person, and the Nika story is from Elba. What does that mean? You know, like, in, like in the grand scheme of the general One Piece story, if now we are hearing that Joy Boy and Nika are two completely different people, oh, give me a sec. Wow. If we are hearing that Joy Boy and Nika are two completely different niggas, like Nika predates Joy Boy, that puts a lot of theories away. Because now we have to look at okay, so Zunisha only knows about the Nika Nika fruit and the abilities through Joy Boy. So we need to ask what was Zunisha's crime again and why was Joy Boy so important? Was if the world was already sunk or was sinking what was joy boy's apology to the mermaid princess for you know such questions need to be asked as of right now because we are unsure of all this you know who joy boy is his quite his questions all that we need to consider that and then vegapunk's message is still very interesting to me because Vegapunk came out here, Vegapunk spoke about, you know, wow, I'm weak as fuck, I don't miss that. In Vegapunk spoke of various different things in story. He, he spoke about the Lucy attack, you know, how he predicted there would be an earthquake. Did Vegapunk know the world government was going to use the mother plane soon? Or was he just guesstimating? 
because if Vegapunk was simply just guessing on what was going to happen, we can't really just talk about it like he knew exactly what was going to happen. However, we can look at it as he was confident, very confident, that there would be an earthquake soon. Like, the earthquake happening was something Vegapunk seemed to be very very confident about like there would be an earthquake guaranteed and I personally I, I wonder this earthquake that Megapunk was so sure of what did Vegapunk really expect from this earthquake this attack that was gonna happen after that again. Vegapunk seemed very confident in this chapter that the earthquake was going to happen because he said it himself. The message was recorded pre Egghead Island and pre Lucia. So it took the Straw Hats a couple of days to get to Wano, uh, some Egg Edge from Wano. So I'm saying maybe a week ago. Vegapunk recorded this message so questions I have right now does Vegapunk keep this information away from the uh, satellites because York didn't know this message was from what I we've seen from the last chapters is the only satellites that knew that Punk was recording this message was Shaka and what was his name again Edison or Pythagoras they knew he was recording this and Vegapunk let the message go out. So, if Vegapunk recorded this and he didn't go into punk records and show off exactly what he was saying, there are a lot of interesting questions we can have of, okay, how does punk records work? Can the, the Vegapunks have choice? Because they didn't know York was working against them. So, that theory of York not inputting info into punk records is very valid right now but the main punk himself and shaka and pythagoras edison i'm not sure which one didn't ever put the information of the message into punk records because the theory for this message was it happened the same day as egghead however right now we are hearing that no it happened a few days before so what does this mean for the story as a whole because like not the story as a whole i'm yapping over that for this arc and the beggar punk story because if punk records isn't they all put it at once and they all understand it means punk records is very much in a situation where it's at one time a punk can put it in they cannot put it in and we don't know how it works, how it functions, what's the criteria for a punk to put in the information, you know. And that's what we we need to know more of. But anyway, I'm yapping on that. We also, we, we see we see Chopper. Now, we, let, let's talk about Chopper for a bit. I am not a big Chopper fan, to be honest. I've had, even in Water 7, no, no, what's that? And his lobby when Chopper went monster point. I could care very little about Chopper. I do not like... I like Chopper, but not as much as the other Straw Hats. So I've always been wondering, what was Oda cooking with Chopper? Like, what was his intended goal with Chopper? Because in this chapter, we saw Chopper has... In 11.13 and 11.14, we've seen Chopper has taken... With guard point, he's taken blows, we'll say blows and hits from Saturn. And he's fine. He's completely fine. So, right, as of today, I see each and every straw hat that's facing Saturn has to be scaled up at least to third commander level third commander level minimum that's why we have to put Usopp, Nami 
Brook, Chopper, they all have to be second commander level as of right now. No, not second, third commander level. Robin should be second commander level simply due to what we've seen her do with her demonio form. That's what we need to see Robin do. Frankie, Frankie looks good. So Frankie, second commander level. Jimbe, first commander level. However, if if they are third, okay, actually no, because Jimbe the problem. So the straw hats who are facing Saturn, I would put them at Toby Ropo level. They are on Toby Ropo. They're not commander level yet, but they are very strong and they can handle themselves very well. So they are immediately before commander level. And then Jimbe is second first commander level second and maybe first commander level. Sanji and Zoro first commander level. Luffy is Yonko. Because power scaling wise, it's Yonko Gorosei same level. Admirals are losing. I'm sorry. Admirals are down right now. Admirals are completely down right now. And that's just how the levels are. What else happened? In, in the chapter, we also saw... What else have we seen in 11.14? We saw... I'm going off memory again. This vision... Oh, we saw Doflamingo. Yeah, we saw Dofi. So... What I think and what's been implied for a while, Dofi knows Emu exists. To Dofi, Emu 100% exists. And he he's laughing at the fact everybody who seems to know about the government, what the government has in hiding seems to be very happy about what's happening with the Straw Hats, this broadcast by Vegapunk. They seem to be very, very, very happy. And I, I understand, I, I feel it, the story is going well, but I feel right now, even though Oda said after Wano that the end game is beginning right now, I feel as, as of today, as of 11.14, we can truly understand that the story is coming to a close soon. Sorry, give me a sec. And overall, it it was um all right. It it was a good chapter. Don't get me wrong. It was a good chapter. It wasn't on the levels of like Kuma flashback. The gap between Egghead and like outside world where like we got all this info on like the Shanks pirates buggy buggy and cross gill. We didn't get all that info at that time. But overall, chapter 1114, very, very good chapter. And I hope there's a break next week. So I hope when we come back for 1115, it's going to be another banger and we continue off. Because something else we have to, as One Piece fans, we have to discuss is Oda hasn't done his usual thing where he, he gives us one info, the chapter ends on a cliffhanger, and then we immediately go to another completely different scene. We haven't gotten that in a while. It's been where the chapter ends, it continues off. And that's been really, really enjoyable. It's been very enjoyable to read. But overall, I give this chapter a... Seven. Seven out of ten. Chapter 1114 or 7 out of 10. Anyway, I'm gonna catch you. Thank you for thank you for watching and listening. Peace.